Good afternoon. My name is Vish Khanna, and you are listening to CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph. Coming up next, a live performance by Toronto's Witch Prophet. Witch Prophet are performing at the E-Bar at 11 p.m. tonight, Friday, April 13th, at the 2018 Kazoo Festival. You can learn more about them and this at kazookazoo.ca. Also of note, the following performance is being transmitted as a radio show on both 93.3 fm and cfru.ca and it's also being live streamed from our scientifically designed green screen dream machine facility at cfru hq you can watch this happening right now or even later if you like on cfru's youtube channel so whatever your platform sit back and enjoy our time with the amazing witch prophet hello witch prophet how are you? Hi, how are you doing? I'm very well. I'm very well. It's nice to see you, sort of. I can sort of see you through the glass. Yeah. It's nice to see you. How, how, who, who are we speaking to? Please introduce yourself. <laughs> yes, I am Witch Prophet, a.k.a. Ayo Leilani, and I am here with my fantastic DJ extraordinaire slash producer, Sun Sun. Hello. Hi, Sun Sun. How are you? I'm doing good. It's great to have you both here, Lalani and Sun Sun. It's nice to have you here. Now, this is exciting. You're going to be playing some music for us, and we're going to be chatting, and uh, we're going to get to know each other a little bit. Uh, before we go too much further, have you ever uh, been to uh, A, Guelph, and B, CFRU Studio? Let's begin with Guelph. Have you been to Guelph before? I have been to Guelph before, yes. And what capacity were you performing? Uh, yeah, actually, um, a few years ago, my band played for uh, Kazoo Festival, when we were called Abstract Random. Abstract Random, okay. Yeah. Okay, and and you liked it so much that you accepted an invitation <laughs> to come back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is Abstract Random still a thing, by the way? Um, ac- abstract Random has turned into Above Top Secret. Above Top Secret, which we'll get into. Yeah. I think there's a whole lot of stuff to get to in the next hour. And Sun Sun, same question. Have you been to Guelph before? Um, Yeah, I've been here before because I was in... Uh, Abstract Random. <laughs> ah, okay. And also have DJed for Latasha Alcindor. She uh, had a show out here before. And okay. I, and we were actually in, I think, this room, this very room right here. Oh, really? The, the exact room? Yeah. The green screen dream it, machine facility. It wasn't facility. the dream machine just yet. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we had though. we had a team of scientists work on this for some time, <laughs> so it, it just doesn't spread up overnight. You know, you have to really put some energy and thought into a green screen dream machine if True. i might say now sun sun uh, before we get too much further i i must say uh, your name is has some guelph significance i don't know if you're aware of this necessarily but there used to be a a very well established uh, chinese restaurant in downtown guelph called sun sun which was near and dear to my heart i think literally it probably clogged up some arteries um <laughs> no it meant the world to me and unfortunately it shut down recently are you familiar with the sun sun restaurant no i've never eaten there before well, you can't now. It's I gone. Know, I've heard. <laughs> I heard it was wonderful. <laughs> it was wonderful. My my favorite dish was like a lo mein noodle with broccoli and bean curd. Sounds perfect. Would you eat that? I would absolutely eat that. Is I eat it? bean curd all the time. Chinese broccoli is my favorite. Really? Yeah. So you, do you know if you were named by whoever named you Sun Sun <laughs> after this restaurant? No, I definitely was not. <laughs> definitely not. Where I was living it? in Brooklyn at that time oh. when I got named Sun Sun. <laughs> okay. Is there a reason you, you've taken on the moniker Sun Sun? Um, it was just given to me by a friend of mine. They said it meant old wise one or something. <laughs> now is it S U N S U N? Yeah. Okay, it's not S O N S O N. Yeah. No, okay. S-U-N, S-U-N. S-U-N. The sun is important, so I, I'm not going to argue too much further with that. I, I think you you were probably named after a wonderful restaurant. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> probably. <laughs> and uh, this is all making me very hungry. Okay, we are going to uh, hear uh, music from you. Uh, pres- pr- uh, I, I don't want to jump the gun too too far here, but are we going to hear new music from you? Yeah. Like, you have a new record that was supposed to be out soon. Yes, it's coming out May 18th. Okay, so we might today hear some... You're definitely going to hear some music. Okay, yeah. what are we What are we going to start with? Um, we are going to start with Time Traveler. Um, the song is off of my upcoming album called The Golden Octave, which is out May 18th, like I said. And um, on the album, actually, the song has Lido Pimienta on it, but of course, because she's not here, it's all me. I kind of feel like Lido is omnipresent. She's with us. <laughs> she definitely is. I'm sure her ears are burning at the moment. <laughs> um, um, but this track has been produced by Sun Sun. 
Okay, let's hear it. This is Witch Prophet with a brand new song, a, a CFRU exclusive, Time Traveler. Take it away, Witch Prophet.
Live on CFRU 93.3 FM, that was Witch Prophet with Time Traveler from the forthcoming release, The Golden Octave, which is out on May 18th. Uh, Lilani Sunsun, that was wonderful. Yay, thanks. Thanks. Were you satisfied? Are you happy? Do you want to do it again? I'm just kidding. It's too late. <laughs> Were you happy? Yes, of course. That I'm was, always happy. <laughs> that was wonderful. I, I want to ask about uh, the, the song there because, uh, first of all, Sunsun, the beat was great. Did you know that Thank the concept you. was... Uh, a time traveling when you came up with that beat? Uh, no, I just make beats and Leilani takes them. Okay, so <laughs> so Leilani, you take the beat uh, and and does this does this inspire the lyrical motifs? Um, most of the time it does, but with 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 um, time traveler, that was actually a freestyle song that I wrote about four years ago. Okay, that I was just sort of working on with just a loop pedal for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I heard this beat that Sun had made and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I can expand this song and actually have it on an instrumental. And once I did, I was like, yeah, this fits a lot. It fits. So, now, are, yeah. are both of you, I mean, uh, let's start with Lani because you wrote the song. Are you interested in time travel? Of course. What, what aspect of time travel intrigues you per se? Would you like to time travel? I mean, aren't we always time traveling? Well, we are always. T- don't get so, this the semantics now. <laughs> I know. I'm saying if you had the option, because I often think about this, yeah. if you could time travel, because yeah. we can't, right? At this point in time, we don't think we can time travel. Well, I think I think it's possible to time travel for sure. And I'm, I mean, like I'm really into dreams and um, different dimensions and alternate realities. So like I definitely think we time travel all the time you think we do yes and uh, i mean like i time travel in my dreams all the time yeah i but visit that... things in the past i see th- what's happening in the future right okay yeah. now that's just for the sake of argument because some people listening might think that's weird yeah for sure <laughs> if you could physically <laughs> transport yourself in time yeah would you go back or forward um yeah, you know, that's hard. I, a lot of people say they'd r- want to go forward, but I think I'd go back. Why? Oh, just because, like, I want to know, like, where are the ancient Egyptians? Oh, you'd go, okay. So yeah, you- like, I'd go I'd go back. I'd, I'd try to see some, like, you know, Anunnaki something, some, like, Sumerian, some, like, something that's, like, ancient knowledge and see what's right. happening there. See, what yeah. I do, what I do, sometimes as a, a way to make myself fall asleep, I, I uh, have little, like, um, strange, uh, they're not strange. I just try to, I have little fantasies like this where yeah. I just try to imagine, like, try to put myself in a dream state. So time travel, I, I was having a time travel uh, moment, and then it was ruined because I thought, what would I wear? Because you're going to not fit in almost in any time you go to. And then the other side of time travel that I find interesting, because I think for a a whole generation, time travel was defined by the Back to the Future movies. Yes. Have you seen those? Oh, yeah, of course. Are you a fan? Yes. Okay. No, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. some people don't like them. It yeah. is a little odd when you step back and look at it. That yeah. This scientist... I mean, didn't we just pass it or something? Wasn't it like 2000 and oh, yeah, the yeah, date yeah. that they had come up to or That's whatever? That's right. When yeah. the Cubs won the, uh, <laughs> the, wait, did they win the World Series the year they were supposed to? I think so. Yeah. It was something yeah. weird. Anyway, something, yeah. but my point is a lot of people, when they, when they contemplate time travel, they only travel within their own existence. Yeah. They want to see what they they would. Some people have regret. They want to fix something they didn't do. You went back centuries. Yes. And that that would be your interest. Yes. So what would you wear? Man, I don't know. Like, You're in ancient can, Egypt. <laughs> can I just show up like naked, like Terminator oh. style? Oh yes, like, you, you could. Know, and like 
somehow stumble upon somebody who has some sort of blanket or something. That's like, possible. <laughs> I don't see people objecting to that. I think that would be fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> sun, sun, same question. Back or forth uh, in terms of time um, travel. What do you think? Uh, I kind of would want to do both, but I think fourth. Yeah, I think she's going forward. Fourth. Yeah. I kind of, I wouldn't mind seeing like um, a Beatles concert, you know, like something or like something just kind of interesting from history. But I, again, I'm Indian, so I don't know if there would be any other Indians at a Beatles concert <laughs> yeah. in the 60s. There and might like, be. There could have been, yeah. but I don't know, unless they I went to India, <laughs> yeah. you know, when they went there. <laughs> anyway, it's a fascinating song, and there seemed to be like a a film noirish quality, a lot of mystery in there yeah. about the identity stuff. That uh, that fascinates you too. Yeah, of course. I actually, I wrote that song because uh, I was doing a lot of research on like past lives and wanting to know um, who I could have been in a past life. So um, this song is about one of my past lives as as a witch. Was this song inspired by the website Ancestry.com? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. It's not a genealogy that you... <laughs> you nope. You, you just fast... <laughs> you determined that in your past life you were a witch? Oh, no. I definitely know I was, but you, yeah. You know you were. I guess you're, yeah. the, the moniker Witch Prophet itself yeah. indicates a kind of soothsaying. Yeah. And, and that... Sorry, just to be clear for everyone listening and anyone who encounters you while yeah. you're in town. Yeah. Uh, are you a witch? Yeah, of course. I mean, but I'm not like the kind of witch that they're like, I'm a witch. Right. I'm going to curse you, which is what a lot of people think. Uh -huh. Actually, I've, I've found that like I get a lot of like negative energy when people read the word witch because it is like it still has this feeling of like, you know, burn the witch. That's something negative. Right. Whereas with me, um, I say I'm a witch because I believe in magic. Okay. And okay. because I do magic, but I don't do it onto other people. It's totally focused on myself and my well-being. And yeah, just like, yeah, just well, so <laughs> working wait a minute. on you, yourself. You do magic as a yeah. witch. Is it yeah. like uh, card games? Is it a coin behind your ear? What no, kind of no. magic are I we mean, talking like, about? No, no, I mean like real magic, okay. like shifting dimensions, like... Um, uh, manifesting destiny or your okay. what you want, right? Like actually, like focusing, uh, using the moon cycles and like mm -hmm. the energy of the earth to get what you want. Pretty much. Now, is this something you learned like at a community college? Where do you learn <laughs> to do these things? I don't understand how. Because I, it sounds fascinating. It's an interesting skill set, and yeah. I'm I'm kind of in a in a weird malaise where I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> yeah. And this sounds intriguing. Could I be a witch or a warlock? Or why not? I don't know. I'm asking. I you. actually I think I feel like warlock is like a bad. Oh, is that version? No, is it? You're not I supposed don't know. to. Am I not supposed I to use that term? I don't know. I mean, like, it's not like the, the N community. word for the witches. Oh, okay, 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 like, okay, I just okay. mean, like, I think it's. I think so it's like wizard and witches are the same oh, thing. Oh, wizard. Yeah, oh, yeah. warlock is like the evil. Yeah. Iteration. Or, yeah, I okay. think so. Um, okay. But I mean, like, oh god, I I really hope no like occult people are like you're wrong <laughs> like i don't know well at this um, hour but... at, at this hour our demographic <laughs> is primarily those in, interested in the occult so uh, i feel like it is you never know i think the listening. phone lines are going to ring up any moment actually <laughs> well it's a fascinating song and you invoked the uh, the other song I, I put a spell on you too yeah. which I, I mean i made little graduate study notes about your song <laughs> i hope that's okay yeah but i like it i was just intrigued by it from the get-go and the yeah. beat was great and it's wonderful and so i we should talk a little bit about um uh, about how you two met first of all i want to get into your your history together when did you two start collaborating oh it's actually the most romantic story ever try to make it I'll, I'll try to make it really short because it's such a long story okay long story short i had a friend who told me about this girl that he had met and he just kept on and on talking about how wonderful she was and that he was upset that he lost her contact. Um, and we were walking in Toronto, me and this person were walking in Toronto in Kensington Market um, during the Kensington Sunday, which is sort of like pedestrian Sundays where they block off the street. And right. They have kind of like a party. Sure. And we're walking through there. And after he had told me about this girl, I was like, oh, man, that sounds really great you talked her up so much and while we were there the girl who ended up being Sun Sun passed by us and when she walked past me it was slow motion and I was like oh my 
oh my goodness, who is this person? This is like a movie, right? right? So she walked past me in slow motion and I was like, oh my God, I'm in love. And as soon as I had that thought, my friend grabbed my shoulder and said, that's the girl that he was talking about. Right. And took off to go see her. Right. Um, but I didn't get a chance to talk to her. Um, and then a couple weeks later, me and my friend again were walking down the street and I saw this party and I was like, man, we should go into this party, into this like clothing store I was having an art show. And I was like, we should just walk in and see. Right. He was like, yeah, yeah, totally. And we walk in and it happened to be Sun Sun's store. Oh. And she was working behind the counter. And at that time I was like, this is my chance. I already lost the chance in the market. And like, I mean, me and my friend were like playfully, um, you know, trying to see who would get Sun Sun's number first type of thing, right? So I was like, I'm, it's going to be me. And so when I went up to the counter, I was like, I love your space. I noticed you're having a party in the back. I run this collective called 88 Days of Fortune. Right. And we'd love to throw a party here. And at that time, I had only done one event. And there really wasn't anything about 88 Days other than me saying 88 Days. It existed <laughs> that as it an existed. entity. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and she was like, sounds amazing. I'd love, like, you can totally do this, but only if my band can perform. And I was like, oh, you're in a band. What's your band? And she was like, Abstract Random. And I was like, cool. <laughs> and so, oh. like, it started like that with, like, the first show of 88 Days and her band performing and then me being like, wow, I need to, one, be a part of Abstract Random, whatever they're doing. This is really weird and interesting. <laughs> and two, I need to marry Sun Sun because I'm in love. And so it took a while, but I weared her down. <laughs> and yeah, now, yeah. you know, we've been together for about nine years. So ten year, next year is our 10-year anniversary, as well as 88 Days 10-year anniversary. So, yeah, so it started off with love, and it ends off with love that's and music. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's not over yet. It's it? definitely not over. No, yeah. it hasn't ended yet. But <laughs> no, that's, that's continuing. A, that's a lovely yeah. story. That's yeah. a lovely story. And so Sun Sun... Uh, was everything that uh, Leilani said there accurate, or do you want to question, <laughs> correct anything there, fact check? No, it's pretty pretty right on. Pretty accurate. Yeah. So you, you did live in Brooklyn at some point, but then you had a shop in Toronto, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I lived in New York for like four or five years. Where are you from? Um, I'm from like Streetsville, tr Mississauga. Mississauga, oh man. <laughs> I played a YMCA in Streetsville once when I was a younger <laughs> kid. They used to put on punk rock shows there. I yeah, yeah there was a lot of punk shows growing up. Were you a punk? Uh, like, I was like a mashup of punk, grunge, and hip hop. <laughs> yeah, same here. That sounds like me. Yeah. That sounds like me. And Leilani, where are you from? I am originally Ethiopian and Eritrean, but grown up in Toronto all my life. Were you born in? I was born in Kenya. Oh, actually. you were born. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And when did you come to Canada? When I was four. Four years old. Yeah. Was it a culture shock? Um. Was it registered at four years old that you even experienced culture shock? I yeah. mean, I guess so in terms of the food. Like, oh. I became extremely picky when I came here. Oh. But, like, it's the weirdest things. Like, I, I hated pizza, and I hated anything, whereas I, now it's the opposite. I love that. But, right. like, right. when I came here, it was like, I, I, I really didn't like any of the food. Are you okay now? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm still a definitely picky eater, but now it's flipped the opposite direction. I, I love pizza and hamburgers and... You know what you would have loved <laughs> is uh, food at Sun Sun, the restaurant. I don't know about that broccoli. And <laughs> she doesn't I don't like eat that. Stuff. It's <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. It's got calcium and protein. Oh man, it's my favorite. It is really yeah. good. Sun Sun eats the vegetables for the for this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so before we move on to uh, another song, though, I should ask a couple things. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, Lido, we you would say, you said that uh, friend of the station, friend of this show, Lido Pimenta. Uh, is uh, appears on this song, uh, the song yeah. we just heard, Time Traveler, on the record. Yeah. How did you come to know Lido? Um, I met Lido through a, uh, a friend of ours who invited us out to uh, a rooftop party in on the, in the summertime a couple years ago. Uh -huh. And we met Lido there. And then um, when we started Above Top Secret, we were looking for a drummer. And she demanded that Masaya, who is also her partner, Brandon Valdivia, be in our band. <laughs> and we, like, really demanded it. She was like, I have a vision. Yes. And <laughs> this is my vision. Yes. And he has to be in your band. And so we're like, well, that's great because he's an amazing uh, musician. One of and, the greatest yeah. drummers I've ever encountered. Yeah, he's really, like, yeah. I mean, like, he's a multi, like, he can yes. play so many different things. But he's he's really fantastic. And um yeah, so uh, Brandon 
joined our band and started drumming and we started um, just hanging out with each other. Um, and any time I would perform Time Traveler, she would be like, that's my song. I love that's my song. Are you doing my song tonight? Oh, no. And I'd be like, this is actually my song, yeah, but we, we you don't. can jump on it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I finally recorded it, she actually happens to live down the street from uh, okay. Sun Sun and I. So we invited them over for, uh, I think, a brunch or something and then kind of just was like, the microphone's here. Jump on. Um, uh, Lido is yeah. my 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 friend, yeah. but it's amazing how quickly she can go from uh, co-sign to co-own. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's like that's mine. <laughs> yes, exactly. Lido, calm down. <laughs> yeah. It's not yours. What are you doing? Yeah. No, it's mine, and you can't really argue because she <laughs> always wins. Yeah. Anyway, that's great. I can't wait to hear the the recorded version. Yeah. Um, and I did want to ask you about 88 Days of, Days of Fortune, but I think we can come back to that cool. because you've mentioned it a few times and I, I don't want to forget because yeah. it sounds interesting and it's an interesting part of your trajectory. But we've been chatting a while. Why don't we hear another song? Sure. What do you want to play next? Um, I'm going to play another song off the upcoming album called Manifest. Manifest. Okay. And it is also produced by Sun Sun. Um, Time Traveler is not out yet, but Manifest is, so you can find it on all streaming um, places <laughs> like Spotify and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Manifest is from uh, is also from the Golden Octave. Yes, it is. Which is out May 18th for those uh, who uh, missed that. So okay, let's hear that now. This is Manifest by Witch Prophet. Let's hear it. Cool. <laughs> Fights for them, fighting a war that will never end. Say, delusions of grandeur, feeding the minds of young lives. Now it seems they've lost the will to fight, searching for that place to call my home. Visualize, write it down, 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 visualize
Visualize, write it down, visualize, visualize, I'll find my, visualize, find my way back home, visualize, find my way back, visualize, find my way back home, I, visualize, find my way back, visualize, find my way back home, visualize, find my way back, visualize, write it down, visualize. Write it down, I'll visualize, write it down, visualize, write it down, I'll visualize, write it down, visualize, write it down, I'll find my way back home. Oh my, that was wonderful. Manifest. She thinks. Live. In the uh, studios here at CFRU, that was Witch Prophet with Manifest from the forthcoming release of the Golden Octave. Man, that was powerful to see from my perspective. And by the way, uh, if you're listening to this uh, right now, you can also watch it on CFRU's YouTube channel. And there's a green screen surrounding Witch Prophet right now with their own... (laughs) This is unusual. This ha- I don't know that this has happened before in the green screen. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> that's a, quite a little green screen dance you're doing. In the green screen uh, Dream Machine uh, HQ there, I believe uh, people who are watching can see your yeah. specifically designed visuals. Yeah, Sun Sun actually created these visuals for me for a show that I had. And I was like, please, I need something. She was like, all right, what do you want? And I was like, witches. <laughs> Africans, blackness, <laughs> magic. And she was like, okay, and then created this. And that I was is like, a, wow, that, great. That is quite a writer, by the way. That would be an amazing <laughs> request, backstage yeah. request. That, that is uh, remarkable. What, can we? Uh, can you describe, Sun Sun, some of the images uh, that uh, Leilani just described in terms of your approach to drawing, illustrating them, I should say? Um, well, she just asked me to make her in a cartoon version which is what I did and made the animations. Yeah. And then I also um, took clips from, um, I just like Googled Eritrean, Ethiopian women singing and stuff. And, and uh, dancing. And they have a particular dance, so I filmed that and put that in there. Just like I know stuff that she likes and certain magical symbols and stuff like that. Hmm. So and I, it's my color palette. but Yeah. How but, would you characterize that specific dance? What's it oh, called? I don't know what it's called. It's called but I mean, shoulders. like, it's all about the shoulders. <laughs> okay. Moving the shoulders and jumping and moving your neck back and forth. But I mean, like, there's different tribes who who, I see. who are like those are specific to their dances. Like, where I come from, uh, or like my tribe is very um, conservative in the dancing. Like, uh, we dance in a circle. Like, everybody dances in the circle, and the most amount of movement you're gonna get is from your shoulders. I see. Um. Yeah, but we we I asked Francesca to get or Sun Sun to get like a bunch of different um, Ethiopian and Eritrean tribes just mash it up because okay. I believe we're all one, and that's actually what the song is about. Manifest because I am both Ethiopian and Eritrean, and like if anybody knows about those two countries, is that they've they had like civil war yeah. for so long, right? Whereas like I believe we are the same people just with different languages but literally same clothes um um, same food same traditions everything it's just the land that is um separating us and 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 creating this like everlasting war which is also a reflection of like the world that we're living in as as a whole too yeah it is it is indeed i mean i saw you getting uh i could hear you and see you getting emotional during that song Mm -hmm. um and yeah, I was struck by these lyrics. Can you tell me where to find my way home? And we're living in war. And this notion of visualize, write it down, which is, there's a hopeful sentiment to this piece, but yeah. it also seems very heavy. It, it's inspired by uh, anything you personally experience or just... Um, well, I mean, like my mom and dad um, both had to escape Eritrea during the war. And my mom walked, like she walked from Eritrea to Sudan nine months pregnant with my sister like you know I have a lot of aunts and uncles who were generals who were actually uh, um, fighting and who died who died for um, 
their belief in um, creating Eritrea as, as a country yeah. um, and instead of being a part of Ethiopia. Um, yeah, m- I myself, I've never gone through war, but I am a child of the diaspora and like I, I should be living or at least be able to go back to Eritrea and, and to Ethiopia and to see that space and to grow. But instead, I'm here in North America because it wasn't safe there, right? So like my my family immigrated to Canada when I was four and I'm so lucky and I recognize the privilege a lot of people cannot do that. We actually were the family that um, sponsored a lot of the rest of our family to right. come through. Um, so we were like the first here mm-hmm. pretty much, right? So, yeah. Have you been back since you immigrated? Um, yeah, I've gone to both to Ethiopia and to Eritrea I ha- um, maybe about 15 years ago. Okay. I haven't been back since. The rules there are... Are, are pretty tough so yeah i don't think i'll at least with eritrea i don't think i'll go back for for a minute okay yeah the rules are tough like just yeah i mean oh, like okay. i mean just in terms of like you have to walk with your passport you, there's like always checkpoints you you know yeah. everybody has to do um military service um yeah there's not allowed like you know there is not to say that there isn't like um news outlets and things like that but it's very controlled by the government so right whereas i'm a very outspoken very queer person a woman covered in tattoos like it's just there's a lot of things that were like if i were to go back it would be like what are you doing here? Yeah, yeah even though um which i found really interesting was that um eritreans and habesha's and ju- habesha is just sort of the term of like both ethiopian or eritrean so habesha's are very welcoming in terms of like their very serious about their culture and their religion but they're also very welcoming so like with me Mm -hmm. it would be like looked down upon being queer um being a young mother being covered in tattoos doing music right um whereas when tiffany haddish (laughs) who's like this amazing actress who i think is hilarious comedian and like yeah she's a comedian like i like i love her and i love the fact that she's habesha and eritrean but like she went to eritrea and everybody was like wow like they were she's very crude and like her her jokes are not that style but they loved her and they 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 like uh, embraced her because she's so pro eritrea um because they love that right that like nationalism and like I'm pro Eritrea, but I'm also pro Ethiopia. So, like, it's really hard to be like, I am one or the other. Don't you find a, a common trait of of many diasporic uh, culture, like whatever whatever your background is, uh, if you're part of a dias- dias- diaspora, I find that there is a, an expectation that you, the next generation, the first generation, in wherever you land, is expected to not only fit in but thrive with something safe. Uh, so. Uh, I ex- experienced a lot of resistance because of my interest in music and arts mm-hmm. and culture as a potential vocation. Yeah. And in retrospect, I think it had a lot to do with um, concerns about my financial security and, and sticking out from the crowd. Yeah. But then as I became relatively successful at those things, I could see that all of because it was caused a lot of uh, uh, stress and tension. Yeah. But as you succeed at it, the same way Tiffany Haddish succeeded at it, there's this pride that sort of shows up all of a sudden. Have you yeah. experienced that? Yeah, for sure. Like there's initially like, don't, don't do that. Like, don't, <laughs> don't go down that road. Yeah. Just go down the, the road that's more conventional. Yeah, but... my family's number one thing was, why are you taking the hardest possible road? Right. For your life in terms of being queer, in terms of being a young mother, in terms of being a singer. Why am I taking the hardest road? Right. You know, and I was like, well, that... But, <laughs> I didn't choose the road to be hard. I just chose my life and it happens to be something that you think is very hard, but it's easy for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah. Did, so did they embrace it in the end? Um, in the end. Yeah, for okay. sure. Like uh, my family is very supportive of, of uh, my music choices. I mean, my extended family, I don't know. <laughs> like right. I, I'm definitely the black sheep in the family. Everybody's in like, um, cam- like has, uh, is like, either a nurse or doing sort of uh, engineering or something, you know, um, that's like, or a teacher or, you know, where a profession where you could be like, this is my child and they do this instead of saying art, because that's just like, how can you survive off of art? It's like, but the whole world loves it. 
do you not listen to music? Right. Like this, like this, <laughs> yeah. This is an actual job. And, I, I yeah. mean, you come to recognize that they, they're, they're worried because it's a one in a million shot. Yeah. They feel like and it seems less so that it's a one in a million shot these days. But at the time, it was like not everyone can be a rock star. Not yeah. everyone can be like a successful whatever. Yeah. So anyway, I, I do want to ask you about um, finding your voice as a singer. You have a very distinctive and lovely voice, if I might say. Thanks. And it works so well with what Sun Sun's coming up uh, for you there. Uh, you know, you came here when you were four. When did you start actually uh, exploring music as a as an interest and then something that you would do as you know for yourself yeah well actually it's weird because my family uh frowned upon music but yet because we came from such a large family my sister and my cousins and i would always get together sunday after church and put put together some sort of play or musical something to perform for the adults later on right yeah, so we yeah. all always go to my grandmother's house Sunday after church and then we have all these kids and they were told get out so we'd have to like go to the basement or something and do something and what we would do is organize these skits and like do these things and um so like I have footage while I was in Kenya like two years old singing and performing and like being out there you know and really doing it and and I can cont- we continued when we came to Canada doing we were called the cousins band yeah and so like you know we we did that every Sunday um and then when I went to high school I I went to Oakwood Collegiate which is a high school in um Toronto and they had a music vocal program yeah um and so I joined it because I wanted to learn how to sing or be a singer but that program was mostly about like music theory Music sure. theory and um, singing operas, or like you know what he, what my teacher at the time considered real music. Right. Where I was like, no, I want to learn how to write my songs and sing my songs. Um, but I mean, like, the, still the what I learned there was good yeah. for what I'm doing now. Right. Um, but in terms of like writing my own music and performing, that's all self-taught, and it really started about. 10 years ago when I when I started 88 Days. Okay, so that, that, again, perfect segue. What is 88 Days of Fortune? You've mentioned it a few times. Yeah, so 88 Days of Fortune is a music and multimedia collective in Toronto slash indie label. Um, we started off as just uh, a collective, a group of people who would throw uh, bi-monthly events in Toronto, um, providing a platform uh, to showcase the art of uh, queer and trans, gender non-conforming, and straight people um, in the city, yeah. in hip hop, within the hip hop, R and B, and um, alternative rock realm. Um, yeah, it started off as parties, and then as the years progressed, we started releasing mixtapes, um, where we would collect songs from everybody in the collective, and then just sort of post them up on Bandcamp for free. Um, and then it turned into, how can we? actually make money off of this sure. like because it was this thing of like you know when you're so passionate about something you could be like i'll do it for free forever i just love this but after a while it starts to really get tiring because it's a lot of work organizing i, I can't shows. relate to like, that at all i yeah, can't <laughs> right no like, I, yeah sure. no i know it, it's a uh, it's like, hard yeah it's a lot of work so yeah. it's like man i don't want to be like we need money to do this but we need money to do this so we took a break for about two years to sort of regroup um and now we're focused more on um uh like one-off shows so like uh last year we only had one event and it was for our eighth year anniversary and it was um a partnership with nuit blanche and the city of toronto so it was something that was funded yeah it was uh they gave us we, they gave us a, what are those things called storage container to like throw a party in and like, we we created this creature out of it and we had an art party and a performance and stuff like that but, really it's just focusing on like one off parties or events and releasing albums so we've released, um, uh, Yasmin who is a, rapper from Scarborough mm-hmm. in Toronto or. Scarborough. It's a suburban. Yeah, it's a sub- suburb of Toronto. Yeah. 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 Um, and she's an amazing, like, hardcore queer rapper. Um, she just re- we just released her album. It's called No Squad in the Wild. Um, 
we'll also be releasing Witch Prophets album um, and as well as Above Top Secret's next album, which is going to be called 1984 Is Now. So wait, what is Above Top Secret in relation to Witch Prophet and it's just another project? Yeah, so Witch Prophet, so it's a bit confusing because it's it, it looks like the same band over and over because both myself and Sun Sun are, in, are involved in it. But uh, Witch Prophet is just myself. Right. It is my music. It's R&B and soul. It's songs that I've written. Right. Um, some of the beats are produced by Sun Sun, but not all of them. Okay. Um, and then Sun Sun is my DJ. Um, with Above Top Secret, it is a uh, electro dub hop band. Okay. Um, where I myself is on vocals, Sun Sun is on vocals, and she also produces, and then we have Masai on the drums. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's two okay. different bands, but because both... Uh, myself and Sun Sun are visible in both. People just assume that it's one, but right. it's two different projects. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. All right, well, we, we're we running out of time in terms of, uh, you know, our time together today. So I thought maybe we could go to uh, one more song, perhaps. Cool, yeah. What did you want to play next? Um, so you guys are lucky. You get two songs that I don't have anywhere online so you can hear it. Are these also, um, are th- is this another this one? This is a new one as well, yeah, from okay. the album. It is produced by Murr, who is a part of Lao, who is, uh, they're a fantastic electronic um, house, political, I don't even know what, amazing band from Toronto. Um, and it features Rosina, who is a singer, a part of Lao. So it's called Mirror.
Nice one. That was Witch Prophet with a brand new song called uh, Mirror from the forthcoming release, The Golden Octave. That song uh, produced by Murr from the excellent uh, Toronto collective Lal featuring Rosina of Lal as well on vocals. Uh, 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 Leilani and uh, Sun Sun, well done, if I might Thanks. say. Thanks. Thanks for having us. That was a fun one. Yeah, it's, I love it. It's very... Ab- <laughs> 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 it's hard for you to be impartial, I imagine, about that one. I actually... I'm, I'm always the one who's like, I hate this song, but actually, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually happy about my album and I like the songs on it, so it's good. How did you come to work with Lal? Lal are uh, friends of Guelph, friends of CFRU, friends of... Uh, mine so it's, yeah. it's nice i've actually i've i've known both of them for a long long time and actually i think i i met rosina the first time maybe in the 90s in the basement of hmv at, on young street oh yeah um so she's like a restaurant or something <laughs> now i don't know what it is i don't right know now. what it is right is now part, is it part sure. of ryerson um maybe i just was in on that yeah I, I it's don't a norma- weird strip it it looks different yeah now. i don't i don't normally go down that strip but i had to stay there uh recently and i like at a hotel there near there and i was just like oh it's all totally yeah totally different it's yeah. definitely lost all its uh culture yeah it's upsetting it but. is it is yeah. upsetting yeah <laughs> yes but it birthed so many things so that's where <laughs> i met um uh rosina and um i've been wanting to work with lao for so long um, and I love Murr's beats. So yeah, yeah, wonderful. All right, well, we are basically running out of time here, and I want to make sure we have enough time to hear one more song cool. before we we have to stop. Um, but uh, for the time being, why don't we just uh, do a bit of a wrap up and 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 let me get you to tell people where they can learn more about you uh, on the internet. I know you're there on yeah. various things, and also if you want to talk about future tour dates or, or plans. Again, uh, the Golden Octave is out. Uh, via 88 Days of Fortune on May 18th. Uh, we've talked about that. And uh, if there's anything else you want to say, please, please yeah, feel free. Yeah, you can follow myself, Witch Prophet, on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. You can find me. Just type in Witch Prophet and I shall pop up. You can also follow Above Top Secret, but make sure you type in Above Top Secret Music if you're Googling us because if you just type in Above Top Secret You'll find some very interesting conspiracy theory websites, which I mean, like, totally go and read them. But if you're looking for our music, type you seem, in music after. You seem like you would be into those. <laughs> oh, I'm totally into it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's it's so great. Multidimensional I mean, conspiracies, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Time travel and whatnot. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, okay. You can see our um, all my show dates should be up on my website, which is just witchprofit.com. Okay, cool. And uh yeah, why don't we go to one more song? Cool. Uh, and then, um, yeah, what what, do you, what would you like to play? Uh, I'm going to play you the song that I wrote about Sun Sun to make her fall in love with me. I wrote this nine years ago, and it's called Love Shock. It's produced by Exile. Love Shock? Okay. I actually yeah. wrote a song about Sun Sun, too. But <laughs> Did you? It's about the restaurant. <laughs> and it's unreleased. <laughs> I have to put that out on. I can help you. Please, I'll put it on. Sound the food version of SoundCloud, whatever that is. All right, uh, let's hear it. Brand new music again uh, by the excellent uh, Witch Prophet Leilani and Sun Sun. Thank you so much for spending time with me and best of luck with everything. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. All right, all right, all right. Love. Love. Let's say it again. Love. Love. Let's say it again. Love. Love. Let's say it again. Love. Love. City, take me to the town, bring me to that place of lights where my fortune will be found. Lift me to the heavens, take me off the ground. Give me that type of love that will always be around. While I'm wishing on the star, I am thinking of you, and I'm hoping that you are thinking, thinking of me too. I love you so much and I'm drunk and by yo Yeah, I'm drunk and by yo Said I'm drunk and by yo Love, 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 love,
Collectively we could get love. Collectively we could get love. Collectively we could get love, love, love. Even if you didn't do it right now. Do it, 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 do hear you but thank you for having us yeah i was just gonna try to fade out of that nice and easy <laughs> and uh play your song there but it's not working on the oh i picked the wrong button that's why here it is here it is there it is Woo! i was just gonna say some stuff what up? Well, say it up that was toronto's witch prophet performing live cfru thank you witch prophet yeah, thank you. It means the world. Thank you. That was amazing. You can catch Witch Prophet tonight at the E Bar at 11 p.m. Friday, April 13th. It's Friday, April 13th. That's bad luck. No, it's good luck for Italians. I'm oh, Italian, so okay. we can. <laughs> Something's Italian, so, so it's good luck. If you're Italian, come on by, I guess. <laughs> come by the E Bar tonight for the uh, 2018 Kazoo Festival and see Witch Prophet at 11 p.m. Learn more about that at kazookazoo.ca. And thanks again for listening on uh, line at cfru.ca on the radio at 93.3 FM. And again, check out this green screen performance on CFRU's YouTube channel. That is it for me. Uh, stay tuned for more great programming on CFRU. And go check out Witch Prophet, right, Witch Prophet? Yeah. All right, we'll talk Jeez. to you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye for now. Ciao. You're listening to CFRU 93.3 FM.